Geek arguments have been around for as long as I can remember. From the more popular all-encompassing ones like Star Trek vs. Star Wars or DC vs. Marvel, to the more specific ones like Batman vs. Superman or the Unstoppable Juggernaut vs. the Immovable Blob. When I was in grade school, there was one particular debate that raged on in my class, and that was who would win in a fight, Prime Mike Tyson or Bruce Lee? But aside from that, we also argued all day long over who was the better Decepticon, Shockwave or Soundwave? At first glance, aside from them both being rather high-ranking Decepticons, there doesn't really seem to be any real compelling reason to pit Soundwave and Shockwave against each other in a which one is better argument. But when it comes to being kids, you don't really need much to start up any debate around your favorite toys and cartoon characters. So the fact that both their names ended with Wave was as good enough a reason as any. Anyway, if all you had to go by were the Transformers cartoons, I think the answer would be pretty obvious. With his iconic, emotionless, and monotonous voice, and his cool ability to shoot out his own personal army of minions from his chest, Soundwave definitely was superior. Shockwave, on the other hand, got the short end of the stick as he was left behind on Cybertron to man the fort for millions of years while the Autobots and Decepticons continued their battles on Earth. He literally had one or two lines of dialogue in the entire first cartoon miniseries, and he would have easily been forgotten had it not been for his unique look, highlighted by a single eye in the center of his face, making him look like a mechanical cyclops. But we'll get to the story behind that a little later on. Despite his rather non-presence in the cartoon, I belong to the Shockwave is Cooler camp for one reason. Aside from watching the cartoon, I also read the Transformers comics by Marvel, and in the comics, Shockwave was a totally different animal. Unlike his cartoon counterpart who was completely loyal to Megatron, Marvel Comics Shockwave was constantly challenging Megatron over leadership of the Decepticons. He did so because logically he concluded that he would make the better leader. And unlike his fellow Decepticon, the conniving Starscream, Shockwave actually managed to defeat Megatron and take over Decepticon leadership from time to time. I remember the iconic cover of issue number 5, where a solo Shockwave stands with a smoking gun hand before a wall where the Transformers are all dead is written. And then the following issue, which showed Shockwave defeating Megatron in mid-air combat. I remember seeing this cover and being, well, shocked. Up to this point, I only knew Shockwave as the subservient and loyal Decepticon that he was in the cartoon. And now here he was, that same bot, blowing Megatron away. Since then, Shockwave has become a bigger character in almost all comics and cartoon series that followed through the years. And more often than not, he is depicted as one of the most powerful and dangerous characters in the Transformers universe. What makes him unique though is that despite being one of the more powerful Decepticons, Shockwave is best known for his brilliant mind. He's not an in-your-face type of bad guy. Rather, he's one who hides in the shadows, coldly calculating logical ways to defeat his adversaries. And speaking of his face, or rather, lack of one, Shockwave's single glowing pulsating yellow eye serves as his most recognizable design detail that even on a surface level places him a notch above his fellow Decepticons, or most Transformers for that matter, as one of the more memorable ones. And how we got it is a pretty interesting story. At least, I think it is. Let's start with the simplest explanation, which comes from the actual Shockwave toy itself. While the majority of the first wave of Transformers released in 1984 came from the Japanese toy line Diaclone, by its second year, Hasbro cast a wider net to bring in as many other Japanese robots into their new very successful toy line. And so included in the second wave of toys released the following year was an aesthetically different looking one-eyed robot originally produced in 1983 called Four Changeable Astro Magnum from another toy company called Toyko. Although if you want to be really technical about it, the actual toy that would eventually be made into Shockwave by Hasbro was Four Changeable Sparkman, licensed from the Korean company Intex, which licensed it from Toyko. Anyway, one common toy descriptor in both the Japanese and Korean pre-Shockwaves was the phrase Four Changeable, which was in reference to the fact that the toy could transform into four different alt modes. Although aside from the Astro Magnum and Laser Vulcan modes, the other two, Vulcan Base and Gunborg mode, were basically variant half-transformed modes between robot and space gun. So it's no wonder that they were pretty much left out during the transition into Shockwave. But I mention them now since the whole four modes premise will be revisited in a later Shockwave toy years later. 
Now, when it comes to how Shockwave got his signature look in other media though, I believe it was only the comic company IDW that bothered to give a proper explanation on how he ended up the way he did. But before we get into that, if you've gotten this far into this story, I'm assuming that you're into it and would be interested in other similar stories. So logically, it would make sense for you to subscribe to my channel, right? So yeah, please help me out and support my channel. Give it a like and click on that subscribe button. Or if you've already done so, thank you and spread the word. Anyway, back to Shockwave. So way back before the great Autobot Decepticon war in Cybertron, Shockwave was a right-hearted senator working in a very corrupt pre-war government run by a narrow-minded functionalist class of Transformers. Basically, Transformers who believed that an individual's worth and social standing in Cybertronian society was based solely on the alt mode one transformed into. At the time, Shockwave was literally a completely different bot. No one-eyed mug or gun hand, but instead a rather normal face, two eyes, a nose, a mouth, and two hands. Personality-wise, he was also the complete opposite of the cold, calculating, single purple-hued Decepticon that we all know. Instead, he was best known as an extremely expressive individual, known for changing his color schemes regularly, and prone to emotional outbursts unbecoming of a senator. More importantly though, he was a constant thorn in the side of the Functionalists, whom he often opposed as he protected and worked with another group of Transformers called Outliers, or individuals who had special abilities not related to their alternate modes and were treated as outcasts and dissidents by the current government. Think Trailbreaker and his force field abilities, or Thundercracker with his sonic booms. He also secretly selected a group of fine upstanding Cybertronians that he hoped would lead Cybertron into a more fruitful future and incorporated them with special matrix chambers in their bodies. One of these was his close ally, a certain bot named Orion Pax. Anyway, for all his trouble, Shockwave was eventually arrested by the Functionalists and was subjected to shadow play treatment wherein his brain was rewired and stripped of all emotion. He was also sentenced to the punishment of Empurata, which is an anagram of the Latin word amputare, meaning to cut away, or amputate. So basically, his head and hands were removed and replaced with a cyclops head that we all know, and claws as a form of mutilation and a way to brand him as a criminal. And so it was this emotionless but still brilliant one-eyed individual that was eventually recruited to join the Decepticons to help take down the corrupt government. It was Megatron who restored his hands, although he chose to only take back one and replace the other with his signature arm cannon. Anyway, since then, there have been many versions of Shockwave in various comics and cartoons, but for the most part, certain specific traits remain constant. First and foremost being that he is always a cold, emotionless, and deadly Decepticon completely ruled by logic. Many other iterations additionally portrayed Shockwave as sort of a mad scientist, constantly experimenting and pushing Transformer physiology beyond its limits. Aside from his association with Transformers outliers, Shockwave is often credited with the creation of many of the other unique Transformers, notably the Duocons, Triple Changers, and Clones. Unsurprisingly, Shockwave is also a key player in almost every iteration of the Transformers, and one of my favorite depictions was in the Dreamwave comics pre-Earth miniseries called The War Within. In the absence of Megatron and Prime, both Decepticons and Autobots splinter into numerous smaller factions, with Shockwave leading what remains of the Decepticons as they are all left to battle the ancient Cybertronian called the Fallen. In the end, Shockwave proposes a temporary truce between the factions to battle their common foe, which they manage to defeat and seal inside the Well of All Sparks with a six-coated barrier uniquely locked by each faction, meant to remain in place until Cybertron was united. Or, as Shockwave put it, until all are one. Anyway, I guess it goes without saying that since Shockwave is one of my favorite Decepticons, it's only logical that I have multiple versions of this guy on my toy shelf. Enough to form my own personal purple Cyclops army. And so with that, here's my rundown of what I've got. First up, Binotech Shock Blast. While this version isn't part of any cartoon or movie, I figured he's worth talking about due to his uniqueness. Since for a time Hasbro lost the trademark rights to the name Shockwave, this version was released as Shock Blast, just in time to set up another argument on who's better between him and Sound Blast. Er. It was part of the Binotech Transformers toy line, which featured robots that transformed into real-world, highly detailed and officially licensed cars. 
Shock Blast was actually a retool of a previously released Meister or Jazz and transformed into a Mazda RX-8, which was a far cry from the space gun that we were accustomed to. Still, it made for a rather gorgeous alt mode, and when transformed with his one yellow eye and signature arm laser, there was no mistaking who he was. Transformers Animated Aside from the original Marvel comics, this is one of my favorite versions of Shockwave from the 2007 cartoon Transformers Animated. In the series, Shockwave was portrayed as a Decepticon double agent who infiltrated the Autobot ranks under his alter ego of Long Arm Prime. And it was as a double agent that he managed to cause quite some damage and take down some formidable Autobots, including the supersonic speedster Blur, whom he scrunched up into a nondescript cube of scrap. And more notably, the Supreme Commander and leader of the Cybertron Elite Guard, Ultra Magnus, who was left incapacitated and on spark support. Anyway, to reflect his role as a double agent in what can be seen as a nice callback to the original four changeable Astro Magnum Sparkman toy, the animated Shockwave toy actually had two robot modes and two alt modes. Granted, the alt modes, especially Long Arm Prime's crane mode, was a little forced. Like his character often did, this guy pushed the boundaries of what we were used to in Transformers toys. Next, Transformers Prime. In the cartoon series that followed animated, Transformers Prime, Shockwave is once again back to his mad scientist ways. His most notable contribution to the series was his successful cloning of the Predacons, who in this show were an extinct race of ancient Cybertronian beasts. Given this Jurassic Parkish achievement in the series, I am often reminded of another callback to the connection between Shockwave and the Dinobots, who in both the original Marvel and IDW comics share a similar origin story, as Shockwave arrives on Earth millions of years before the rest of the Autobots and Decepticons, pursued by Grimlock and his crew. And it's in this prehistoric Earth that Shockwave and the Dinobots do battle, only to be eventually buried alive under a volcanic eruption or sink into a tar pit, depending on the series, and later to be uncovered and revived in modern times. Next, we have Shockwave from the third live-action Transformers movie, Dark of the Moon, in 2011. During the film's production, Shockwave was announced to be the main bad guy of the film. In fact, in the prequel comics leading up to the film, he was set up as a powerful Decepticon who single-handedly killed a number of Autobots who were featured in previous films or in their accompanying toy lines, but didn't appear in the actual Dark of the Moon movie. Rest in peace, Jolt. Unfortunately, when the movie came out, it turned out that he was just a red herring, placed there to mislead the audience from the true villain of the movie. Spoiler! The traitorous Sentinel Prime. Once his purpose was served, he was unceremoniously killed off by Optimus Prime in the final battle. While I initially owned the original toy that was released in the line with the movie, I eventually sold it off when I upsized my movie collection line to movie masterpieces and oversized knockoffs. And while there has been an oversized knockoff of a much improved version of Shockwave that was released in the Studio Series line, I have yet to get it. Even if he does look like a massive beast, I don't know, the fact that he really didn't do or say much in the movie kinda soured me to this version, but who knows, maybe one day. Siege Shockwave At first glance, this version of Shockwave looks quite gimmicky with the extra arms and huge attachments on his shoulders and feet. But the more you think about it though, his excessive weapons and attachments would seem to be at par with what a mad scientist would do to himself. So it works for me. In any case though, all that extra stuff is ultimately removable and when taken off, you are left with arguably one of the best retail Shockwave toys currently available. The base figure is a no frills, back to basics Shockwave and it looks fantastic. And while due to toy restrictions he transforms into some random Cybertronian ship, technically you could kind of fudge it into his more iconic space gun mode. And as a bonus, the extra parts can be assembled into a kind of space sled for Shockwave, making this toy a whole lot more interesting and fun. MP29 Masterpiece Shockwave When this figure was first released, a lot of collectors were kind of disappointed since it looked a little too accurate to the cartoon and not so much to the original toy. He sported a noticeably lighter shade of purple and felt a little undersized for such a major Decepticon. But all that didn't bother me one bit. This masterpiece version is clean and fun to transform, and I am totally on board for this being completely based on the original subservient and loyal cartoon version of Shockwave. It serves that purpose well for my collection. But of course, 
No true shockwave lineup would be complete without a proper representation of what I consider to be the ultimate version of shockwave. The one from the original Marvel comics, and for that version of shockwave, I have third-party company Cloud9's Quake Blast. I found this toy in a convention here in Manila. I remember seeing this guy in a booth early on with my wife by my side, but I only decided to get him before we left. Before heading to the exit, I quickly made a beeline back to the booth and the shopkeeper, who was a friend, noticed that I didn't have my wife with me and so he jokingly said, Ah, I see you had to sneak away from your wife first before getting this. Anyway, now this is the Alpha Shockwave in my collection, the way I always envisioned the ultimate shockwave to look like for my shelf. Unlike the sleeker MP29, this one is bigger, bulkier, and darker, and more importantly, looks like a bot that could easily take down Megatron. And so there you have it! Regardless of which iteration you prefer, there is no denying Shockwave's importance in the Transformers universe. So are there any other fans of this huge, emotionless, purple, yellow-eyed Cyclops? Just saying, I can totally get on board with anyone who identifies him as their favorite Decepticon. It's only logical, after all. Let me know in the comments below and tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf. If you enjoyed this story, why not check another one? And please help me out by giving me a like or comment, and subscribe to the channel to get notifications whenever I upload a new story. Until the next one!